These are some of the lowest paid workers in Britain. No one earns more than four pounds a week for up to 27 hours work. This man is stapling mail order covers for records. His maximum wage for up to 22 hours a week is two pounds 50. This woman is gluing packaging for a well-known brand of kitchenware. She works up to 30 hours a week. Her maximum pay is one pound 75. There are more than 50,000 men and women in Britain today being paid similar wages. They're all either physically disabled, mentally handicapped, mentally ill, or just old. They attend day centres run by local councils or are patients in psychiatric hospitals. They work for some of Britain's biggest and best known companies. However, they work for pennies, not pounds. Government restrictions prevent most of them from being paid more than four pounds a week, no matter how hard they work. For five months, World in Action has been investigating Britain's day centre and hospital workshops. Tonight we show how private and nationalised industry and local councils benefit from an unseen army of the disabled and the handicapped who are working for a pittance. These buses are bringing disabled and elderly people to a council-run day centre. Since 1948, government legislation has created a network of these centres for them to go to throughout the country. However, there are no government guidelines about what people should do once they're here. The aim in many centres is to get the disabled and the elderly out of their homes and provide meals, recreation or just relief for them and their families. Today, however, many who voluntarily attend these centres spend much of their time doing lowly paid contract work for local companies. Some of them are critical of the system but are afraid to speak out. Bert Massey, who is disabled, has studied the day centre system. We asked him what he thought of the contract work. Not jobs I could put up with for more than a few hours. And I think many disabled people I know who have attended day centres, and I think it's their view which is important, have said that they find the task given to them almost moronic. They're tedious, they're boring. They don't change. It's the same thing day in, day out. That could be said, of course, for many people who are working in industry but they're receiving a damn sight more than several people are. We found this example of work being done by the disabled and the old in a South London day centre. This woman is over 80. She and her companions are changing protective covers on wooden spatulas. The spatulas are being sent to doctors to promote drug sales. These two women are 86 and 88. The youngest person here is 65. They come to centres like this usually just to meet their friends, but because of the pressure to complete this subcontract, they've been asked to work. The second part of the job is done elsewhere in the centre by the physically disabled. They come here mainly to work for up to 18 hours a week and earn one to two pounds. Their job is to put the spatulas into new paper covers with different advertising. For this contract, the centre is being paid a pound for every thousand spatulas. They and similar centres have to do a million. the centre manager, Christopher Lay. I think it's very badly played, but we are in the position of uh, beggars with a bowl, really, in today's economic crisis. It's very difficult to find work of any sort, and we can't afford, really, to turn down any type of job. This is an adult training centre for the mentally handicapped. Every council must provide such centres. The aim of these ATCs, as they're known, is to teach 38,000 mentally handicapped adults to look after themselves and, where possible, train them for outside employment. But jobs outside are hard to find, so in 9 out of 10 ATCs, trainees often spend much of their time doing simple assembly or packing work. Molly Meacher of the Mental Health Trust believes there's little value in contract work. It is extremely boring and it is not challenging and it is in no way stretching their um, potential to the limit. Uh, no real attempt is made to, to move the ability of the mentally handicapped person on to improve their capacity over a whole range of skills. It's difficult to discover the real views of the handicapped, but at an ATC in Basildon, Essex, the staff and trainees became so concerned about the lack of value in most contract work that they're phasing it out. 
They showed us one contract which convinced them that the mentally handicapped shouldn't be doing this work. The contract is to reject faulty tips on drawing pins. We asked the manager how difficult they are to find. Well, quite frankly, very difficult. I, I, would, I would have difficulty in, 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 in picking them out. What sort of value or training or therapeutic type is there in doing a job like this? Probably after the first 10 minutes, um, very little, very little. What sort of money would you be paid for doing a job like this? This particular, particular operation is 17p a thousand. 17p a thousand pins? Yes. Is that an economic price for you to handle a job like this? Well, if I can say now that we, we priced it on a, a, an instructor, in fact, uh, working three days, at the end of three days, that instructor would have earned one pound. Alan Stevenson and John Webb, who run the Basildon ATC, are in no doubt as to why companies provide them and other centres with such low-paid contract work. Well, I think it's it just economic, you know, it's, 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 um, it's, uh, it's, it's work on the cheap. Why do you think they give you work? I mean, is it charity in any way? No. Oh, no, no, I fully endorse all what Alan's saying. You know, I don't think, I think charity, you know, charity begins and ends with the WVS and people who come sometimes in from the streets and they may give us, can your centre use this? But when it comes to the actual industrial work, no, usually we have to go out and look for it. No one comes to us. The only time they come to us is if they're in trouble and they need yeah, more work that's done. That's right. We have to be viable. We have to, in, in their sense, we have to produce a certain amount and that they ask for, for you know, they, they insist on schedules and when we've not been able to keep to these schedules, it's they've pressure. taken the work yeah. away from the centre and given it to somebody else. Yeah. And there's always somebody else to take it. What other savings are there to a company in using a centre like this for doing work? Well, um, I, I would say in particular, you know, storage space. I know for a fact that lots of centres are used um, for this storage space. This adult training centre in London's East End shows how council property can save storage costs for companies. There are other bigger savings. ATCs, day centres, hospitals, prisons and home workers compete for these simple assembly and packaging jobs. Some companies play off one against the other to get the work done as cheaply as possible. In almost every case, the job would cost more if it was done in a factory, even by the lowest paid factory worker. The firms save not just on wages, but on pensions, national insurance contributions, holidays, welfare and redundancy payments. Further savings can come on rent, rates, heating and lighting. The disabled and the handicapped do the job more slowly, which is why contracts are priced per item, but they still do it adequately and much more cheaply. This is an industrial therapy unit mainly for the mentally ill. Most psychiatric hospitals have such workshops inside or near the hospital. Over 20,000 patients work in them. Their aim is to rehabilitate the mentally ill. They're yet another source of cheap labour. George Jackson, the manager here, has run industrial therapy units for 14 years. Previously he was in industry using hospitals himself to get work done on the cheap. We asked him what kind of work the mentally ill are given. They're mostly the more mundane type of work, the tedious and the monotonous type of work that companies perhaps can't get the staff to do in their own factories or they can only get temporary staff to do on a short term basis very difficult for companies to get hand gluing or packing of things into plastic bags week in week out on a regular basis so they pass them out to the day centres. Employing the disabled and the handicapped costs very little. These weekly wage packets are being made up at a work centre in Bromley, Kent. Wages here are just two to three pounds for a 30 hour week. Government regulations dictate that the disabled and the handicapped can't earn more than four pounds a week, otherwise they lose their state benefits pound for pound. However, many councils don't pay the maximum four pounds allowed. The mentally ill are better off. They usually have paid some national insurance contributions and are supposed to be doing work as therapy, so the mentally ill can earn up to ten pounds a week. But the handicapped and the disabled also receive supplementary benefits and other allowances. Sorry. Thank you very much. Researcher Bert Massey again. 
But what would you say to, to those people who say that, well, these people only paid a pound or two pounds a week, but then they're already receiving maybe a total amount of 28 to 30 pounds a week from the state, so why should they be paid anything else? I think that's fair enough, but having said that, we've got to say, well, what work are they doing? Because some people in centres are doing contract work for industry. And if they're doing contract work for industry, and industry is selling the products presumably at a profit, then some people might say that paying sale people a pound a week to do this work is exploitation. World in Action asked 112 major local councils in the areas indicated on this map whether they did contract work in their centres and what wages they paid. Of the 67 councils who replied, only seven didn't do contract work. Wages were as little as 20 pence a week. The average was only two pounds. We also visited 35 different work centres. We found widespread use of disabled and handicapped people as cheap labour, not only by small firms, but also by many leading companies, nationalised industries and local authorities. We investigated in detail four contracts to show the benefits to those who use the disabled and handicapped to get work done on the cheap. First, the Griptide contract. Lewis Wolf Griptite make a baby's feeding bottle which is sold exclusively by Boots. Boots are not involved as this is a subcontract. These mentally handicapped workers at Meadowbank, an ATC in Burnley, Lancashire, assemble and pack up to 15,000 bottles a week, a large part of Griptite's output of this line. They're paid 50 pence to £1.75 a week for up to 30 hours work. Griptite pay the centre less than a quarter of a penny for each bottle. To evaluate this price, we went first to George Jackson, manager of the Coventry Therapy Unit. He insists on a fair price and some therapeutic value. I would cost putting that together at roughly two and a half pence each. I would, after a bit of argument, I would probably accept one and a half pence each, but I would certainly not go any lower than one and a half pence. Uh, one and a half pence each would be 15 pounds a thousand, thousand bottles. Yes. What would you say if I was to tell you that that is currently being job is currently being done for two pounds a thousand? Well, that's twenty p per hundred. It doesn't bear thinking about. I think it's the one reason for putting the baby back on the breast is to stop producing these because we certainly wouldn't produce it for that. We also commissioned the School of Work Study in London to price this contract, assuming normal wages and average overheads. Their estimate was one p a bottle. They said that even if the job was done by Griptite's most productive employees, the price would still be three times what the centres paid. From its Preston headquarters, Lancashire County Council told us that council policy was to provide, on as broad a basis as possible, education for living, and it was considered that the right to work should be met, among other things, by arranging industrial contracts. But this was just one of many ways of providing a therapeutic environment. Other things were regarded as far more important. Lewis Wolf Griptite is controlled from here by millionaire Eric Hurst. Griptite's last published yearly profit was £207,000. Eric Hurst declined to appear or to answer written questions, but he did tell us that he had been through the costings and was entirely satisfied that the company gained no financial advantage from having the work done at Meadowbank. The only reason the work was done there was because of its social implications. He added, Mr. Robinson, the manager of Meadowbank, informs me that he is completely satisfied in every way, and so do senior officers of Lancashire County Council. I can only add that unless our customers object or we are in any way given adverse publicity, we shall continue to support Meadowbank. But it's not only private enterprise that benefits from the disabled and the handicapped. The second contract we examined involves a state-owned corporation, the British Airways contract. The elderly and disabled workers at this day centre in Uxbridge, near London Airport, are slicing lemons for the drinks provided on all British Airways European flights from Heathrow. They work 15 hours a week and are paid by the council the maximum £4. British Airways pays £2 for 100 of these trays. We asked a leading contract caterer his labour charge for doing a similar job. He said £2 an hour. The centre is paid effectively 55 pence an hour on average. However, the most prestigious British Airways contract this centre handles 
is for the Concorde. Since early 1976, disabled workers at Uxbridge have been filling presentation wallets for Concorde passengers. Each wallet, as we demonstrate, contains mementos like a silver coin, writing pad, slippers, postcards and adverts for luxury articles. But when we arrived to film at Uxbridge, British Airways had told the centre that the Concorde work wasn't to be filmed. It was felt inappropriate to link Concorde with disabled people. So other work was being done on this table where Concorde wallets were previously assembled. This spastic woman had told us that she filled up to 100 wallets a day. But we did find the Concorde material stacked here in the centre's storeroom. After some delay, the centre is once again carrying out the Concorde contract. British Airways pay two and a half pence a wallet. The School of Work Study put the cost at just under four pence. A contract packer quoted eight pence. From its Uxbridge offices, Hillingdon Council told us, We are entirely satisfied with the contracts. The purpose of a centre such as this one is not solely to provide work, but also to offer social contact. We do not feel that the handicapped people there are being exploited. Finally, we asked Ken Whitaker, British Airways Head of Supplies, if it was cheaper for them to have work done at Uxbridge. Uh, all our subcontract work is on the basis that um, it is less expensive than being done here. Is not British Airways really taking advantage of the cheap labour that is offered by centres such as the one at Hillingdon to get work done at an advantageous price? No, I don't believe that we are. I, as I say, I believe that it's mutually beneficial. But if it costs you more to do it at Hillingdon, then in fact it could be done elsewhere. Do you think you'd still do the work there through disabled people? They, they, as I told you, they, we are not a charity, we're running a business. And as such, uh, items still have to be commercially viable. Some companies use disabled and handicapped workers on a large scale. The third contract we examined is spread over a variety of work centres. The toy contract. This company, Britain's, makes a wide range of toys found in shops throughout the country. They use several different sources of cheap labour. These mentally handicapped workers in a Bow East London adult training centre are paid from 75 pence to £2.50 a week. They work up to 22 hours a week, part assembling Britain's toy tractors. The centre was being paid late last year just under one and a half pence for each tractor. A mile away in Stepney is a work centre for the disabled, blind and elderly. More than 2,000 larger, more expensive tractors a week were being part assembled and packed here for Britons. This woman is 93. Others in the workroom are over 80. They're paid just 10 pence an hour. The average payment is two pounds a week. Again, we asked George Jackson what price he would charge to do this same contract. Well, I've had a look at it, and there's approximately 11 different operations involved in it. But there is a great therapeutic value within this particular job. But we would hopefully get around about 8p per carton completed. We would possibly come down to about 5p, but we would not come any more than 5p. The School of Work study priced this contract at just over six pence each tractor if done in a factory. That's four times the one and a half pence paid to the day centre. Tower Hamlet's social services director told us that if a satisfactory price wasn't negotiated, then the work wasn't done. The centres were there primarily to avoid loneliness. People were happy to receive the additional money and were under no pressure. This is the Britain's factory in Walthamstow, East London. Britain's last published yearly profit was £603,000. Chief Executive Joseph Thake declined to appear or to answer written questions about Britain's use of the disabled and handicapped, but he did say this. We like to think we are an honourable company, but sometimes it is better to keep your mouth shut and let the world think you are a fool than to open it and confirm it. However, Britain's isn't the only company that makes great use of the handicap to get work done cheaply. This is the Accrington Lancashire printing factory of fine art developments, Europe's largest greetings card printers. 
Fine art are the biggest producers of Christmas cards sold by charities such as the National Society for Mentally Handicapped Children. Another offshoot prints cards for the Queen. Its subsidiary, Web Ivory, handles the cards, wrapping paper and gift tags sold by many charities and organisations. Web Ivory lorries are constantly on the road between Accrington and over 20 hospitals, ATCs and industrial therapy units, carrying either cards, wrapping paper or other Christmas items for collation and packing. For several million cards and a large part of the other items, Web Ivory rely on the handicapped and the mentally ill. Hospital workshop managers complain to us about the low prices paid by Web Ivory and the production deadlines insisted upon. Last year, Fine Art Developments made profits of £3,600,000, Web Ivory's last published profits were £840,000. Chairman Frank Kerry told us, We think we are doing a good service to the hospitals. We are certainly not taking advantage. We are doing this as a charitable gesture. Not only industry takes advantage of the savings from using mentally handicapped workers, so do local councils. Finally, we examined the laundry contract. Laundry work was initially considered suitable for the mentally handicapped. At least one in four ATCs has a laundry. Today, however, the Department of Health is opposed to laundries as having too limited a training value. They're also open to the accusation of cheap labour. But many councils still rely on them for their old people's homes, nurseries and hostels. This woman is paid a maximum £1.45 a week for working up to 27 hours. Two women who used to work with her now work in a local Lancashire commercial laundry and earn £23 a week for doing a similar job. This laundry in London was one of the first to be opened. The workers here earn up to £2.85 a week. The council establishments using this laundry pay just five pence an article. A laundry at this ATC in North London was recently criticised for its factory-like regime. It handles some 3,000 articles a week at 10 pence each. Mentally handicapped people work here for up to four pounds a week. We requested permission to film inside this laundry and were refused. A recent council report stated that the laundry work done at the ATC would cost the council customers over 70,000 pounds a year if done commercially. It currently costs the council 6,000 pounds. Haringey's social services director, Douglas Shaplin, declined to appear. But he told us... No one is arguing that that laundry should cease. If there are 12 or even 6 clients who get a satisfaction from the laundry, then I would not want to say we will close it. I would not say quite unhesitatingly that there is not a place or a need for such a facility for mentally handicapped clients. However, I do not feel that the criticism of taking advantage of those who work in the laundry can be levelled at us. At the end of our investigation into day centres and adult training centres, we put the issues it raised to Brian Roycroft, Secretary of the Association of Directors of Social Services. I don't think there's any way in which, in which one can defend a situation where people are only going there to work and be occupied in a dull routine. I know this happens and I think it's, it's appalling that it is still allowed to happen in some places. I think it, it happens perhaps because there is a gradual change in the way in which we're trying to look after particularly mentally handicapped people. And local authorities have not been prepared to spend money on providing the other sorts of facilities which help people to learn how to live properly. We then asked him if it was his view that local councils were taken advantage of by firms providing contract work. Yes, I, I understand this is the case, but then on the other hand, local authorities have a great deal of difficulty in getting the sort of work. Uh, that many of the mentally handicapped can undertake. I don't defend the situation, but it happens, and I am aware that it happens up and down the country. Finally, we put to Mr Roycroft the question of whether the physically disabled and the mentally handicapped were also being taken advantage of. The absolute literal answer to that is yes, they are being taken advantage of in one sense, but in another sense, and please let's keep this involved, they are living in the community and working in the community and taking part in community life which otherwise might not be available to them. So there are many advantages in the situation for them. D. Ow. N. Right, what's the word? Some ATCs, like this one at Basildon, are concentrating less on contract work and more on teaching the mentally handicapped how to live a near-normal life. 
Look at the dirt on the tissues. Basildon's Alan Stevenson and John Webb want to see an end to contract work. We know the mentally handicapped can do simple repetitive work. We've known it for 20 years. There's no need to keep on proving that point. What they can't manage is, uh, or they have great difficulty with, is getting on with people or people getting on with them hmm. and meeting people. And this is where work experience and outward looking ideas. The system meet. they've got at the moment with the industrial setup is your very great danger of becoming a ghetto within the community and people just walk past and say, what goes on in there? All oh, mentally handicapped work, you know? Our job is to be a base and to branch out. And the biggest teaching aid you can get is the local community. World in Action has learned that later this year, the government will publish a review of the earnings restrictions on the disabled and the handicapped. New guidelines on what should happen in ATCs and a policy on day centres are also expected. Last month, Health Minister David Ennals stated, we must not just put up buildings and fill them with people. We have to think very hard about what is to go on inside these buildings once they are up. When that thinking stops, so too must the use of Britain's disabled, handicapped and old people as cheap labour.